Welcome to the York Jewish Heritage Audio Trail. This exploration of Jewish life in York, both in medieval times and in the more contemporary past, is the product of a research project by University of York postgraduate students in conjunction with the Institute for the Public Understanding of the Past. Our journey is narrated by York City archaeologist John Oxley. The trail begins at the Visitor Information Center on Museum Street with a brief introduction to York's Jewish history. The history of Jewish communities in England is a long and complex one, and the Jews of York have a special place in this story. While the massacre at Clifford's Tower in 1190 is the most famous episode of York's Jewish history, it is only one part of a vibrant and fascinating story that begins nearly a thousand years ago. Jewish communities first came to Britain in significant numbers with William the Conqueror's Norman invasion of 1066. Jews, unlike the rest of the English population, were made direct subjects of the king. They had no feudal or financial obligation to local landowners. This special relationship gave the king major financial benefits and, as we shall see, had a serious impact on York's Jewish community. It is important to remember that, in stark contrast to modern attitudes, Charging interest on loans or usury was considered a serious sin in the Middle Ages and was forbidden by the Church. This meant that, although there were a small number of Christian moneylenders, Christians were not supposed to lend money for profit. However, Judaism does not include this rule, so Jews were free to act as moneylenders and did so both in York and elsewhere. By making Jews his direct subjects, the king had full access to this wealth and, as we shall see, made great use of it in the form of taxes levied on the Jewish population. Anti-Semitism was widespread in medieval Europe and it is important to know that while York has a special place in Jewish history, it is not alone. The discovery of the bodies of 17 Jews in a well in Norwich, thought to have been murdered in the 13th century, show that the massacre at Clifford's Tower was not an isolated act of anti-Semitic violence in medieval England. In 1218, a decree made it a legal requirement that Jews wear a badge identifying themselves as Jewish. England was the first, but certainly not the last European nation to institute such a law. In 1290, Edward I expelled the entire Jewish population of England. All Jewish property was seized by the crown, and all outstanding debts were made payable to the king. The expulsion of the Jews was a popular policy and transferred vast sums of money to the treasury. The Jewish population in England at the time was relatively small. While population estimates vary, there were probably about 5,000 Jews that is less than 1% of England's overall population in the 13th century. Jews were not able to return to England until 1655, but some people were given special permission to remain in the kingdom. A famous example is Rodrigo Lopez, physician to Elizabeth I. During the 17th century, ideas in Britain began to change and commercial and colonial interests developed. In an effort to benefit from Dutch-Jewish trading interests, Oliver Cromwell, Lord Protector of England, tried to attract Jews back to England. However, Cromwell only gave informal permission for the Jews to return to England in the 1650s. He failed to lift the ban on Jews residing in England but tried to make it clear that it would no longer be enforced. However, Jewish communities did not return to England in significant numbers until the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century. Despite the decline of anti-Semitism in Britain and the widespread participation of Jews in British commercial and public life throughout the 19th century, Jews only gained legal equality with most of the British population in 1890 a stark reminder of the all-too-recent intolerance and inequality of British society.